I am envisioning a system that runs the fish waste through a swirl filter into a fill and drain media bed for extra filtration and provide the highest level of nutrients to crops such as tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants. That bed would drain to a DWC system for leafy crops. The overflow for the DWC would go to the sump, which would pump vertically to an NFT herb garden leading back to the fish tank. Does that sound like a viable system? Do you have any additional pointers for me? The school of aquaponics. So we have your diagram here, Kevin, and we're just going to look at it and just kind of review it and, you know, offer some suggestions and uh, maybe some uh, alternative ways to kind of looking at the way you would set up um, the aquaponic system. Um, so for everyone else, I'll just kind of give you a general overview on what we're looking at right here in this uh, diagram. So we can start with the sump tank down here. Um, and we have a pump inside of it. And what this is doing is pumping the water up into an NFT system. This is an NFT system here. And this is all under pressure here. And then it's going to be gravity fed back down here into a sump tank. Um, excuse me, a sump tank, a fish tank. Um, and then from there, we have a solids lift overflow that's going to bring it into a swirl filter. This is a type of mechanical filter. And then um, it's going to go into a media bed. And then from there, it'll work its way down into the deep water culture system, and then it'll return back to the sump tank. Now, I can see already that um, this is how most people, when they begin aquaponics, they envision like a, a system set up kind of like this, this linear setup where everything is just kind of in one type of, um, uh, you know, one type of one after the other. And it's just in one motion, in one flow. And this type of system, it does work. It does work when depending on the way you arrange it. Um, but there are some um, uh, efficiency factors that you're going to miss out on when you set it up in these one directional type of ways. Now, I want you to look at the first thing here um, going up from the sump. We're going right into an NFT system. Now, the problem with this is the problem with this is when you go into the NFT system and you have this as your first uh, component, everything else relies on the flow rate coming from the NFT. Now, NFT systems only allow a small amount of flow to pass through these channels uh, or else it doesn't work. If you have a, a fast or a, a high velocity flow rate coming through these channels, it will not work because the roots, um, when the when the plants begin to mature, the roots act as like restriction zones for water coming through. And the big, the larger the roots get, the, the, the slower the water needs to be or else the water is just going to overflow um, if you have a fast, um, a fast flow rate. So this is something we don't want to be dealing with here. Now, other than that, since we have this small uh, flow rate coming through the NFT system, that's all we get coming out is a small flow rate. So that causes problems right here in the, in, in the fish tank because the tank or the fish need uh, 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 fresh water to be recirculated every so often to stabilize the environment or else you're going to have ammonia problems um, and that's going to that is going to happen in this type of system because you, you have your solids lift overflow right here but it's not going to be picking up anything because your flow rate is too is too slow so it's going to be there's going to be a lot of uh, solids that are going to accumulate down there and it's going to be a lot of ammonia buildup and you're going to have only a small amount of solids that are going to get picked up because the flow rate is too small. So now we can work our way down. Um, and also we can come right to the media bed. This is going to have the same problem. You have a bell siphon in here because you're going to be using a flood and drain system. That slow flow rate that we started out with is not going to be fast enough to trigger the siphon inside of that bell siphon. And you're just going to have a flooded media bed. It's never going to siphon off of a small amount of water. These are the issues that you can face when you'd set it up this way. And then coming back to the deep water culture system, it's the same thing. Deep water culture system needs a faster flow rate because it has a large amount of water in there. So the nutrients need to concentrate in high enough um, amounts in order for the plants to be able to take them up efficiently. So if you only have a small amount of water in the deep water culture system uh, passing through, then you're going to have issues with all type of plant deficiencies and diseases. So now I'm going to give you the blueprint. I'm going to give you my suggestion on how uh, this would be set up at the highest level. That's all we teach here is um, the, the highest level. Um, and linear um, type of setups are a no-go. Unless you're like a home hobbyist with a very small system, then fine. And you don't plan on expanding. But if you want to do it like on a, 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 a for profit or anything like that, you have to set it up. Well, you don't have to, but I would highly recommend you set it up at the highest level, the more efficient way of doing it. So... Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start with the sump tank. You were right about that, having a sump tank. I'm um, adding that in there with your pump inside of there. Um, but what we need to do is we go up, 
We'll split the flow. This is where a lot of people get nervous, start shaking and shimmering. Split the flow, um, and then we'll have one half of it going to the vegetable and half of it going to our uh, fish and um, filtration. Now, when we split going to the um, our vegetable area, remember I told you in the, the all those type of systems require different flow rates. Your media bed, your deep water culture system, and your NFT system they require different uh, flow rates. So. What we can do is we can have our line, our line under pressure going all the way um, across, extending all the way across all of those. And then we can have um, T's and separate pipes that come out of the main line still under pressure and going to each one of the, di the different systems. So we can have our, um, our, our media bed. We can have that coming up and we can put a ball valve on here and we can control the flow now. We can control it. If we want it to go slower, faster, doesn't matter. We can control it. Same thing with the deep water culture system. We have it coming out under pressure. We can control it. We can uh, uh, turn the knob however we want to. The NFT system, we can't run it full blast like we're running all the other ones. So we can, we can um, adjust the knob on that as well. And then once the, the outlet from all of those systems, the outlet from all of those systems will come to one main large pipe. This is a bit like a four inch pipe is what we use here, a large four inch pipe and they'll all drain back into that pipe, which will all return back into the sump tank. Boom, that's knocked out. On the fish tank area, it's the same thing over here. We just, we pump, we're under pressure on, from the main line. We go up to the fish tank, boom, that goes in there. We can adjust the flow to however much water we want to circulate through the, um, the fish tank. And then from there, we'll have our solids lift overflow. You had that in your diagram, which is super good. Um, and that'll be sucking up solids. Boom, it'll come to the mechanical filter, and then from there, it'll go into the biological filter, and then it'll return back into the, um, to the one main, um, the, the, the main line, and that'll return back into the, um, the sump tank. And that's the efficiency model right there. That's the efficiency model if you want to run for profit. I'm telling you right now, it's, gonna, it, it's not anywhere as near as difficult as it may look. It's, it's, a, it's fairly simple. It's just a few adjustments from how you would re uh, usually put it together and you're just splitting things up and keep it thing, keeping things nice and neat. You want the fish tank and the mechanical uh, or the filtration in one area, nice and neat over there. And then the same thing with your, um, your grow system. You just want that separate and you want to have maximum control. That's all it is. It's nothing super hard. Um, it's nothing to be scared of. You definitely can do it. And I would highly recommend you doing it in a, a, some type of fashion that would mimic um, this type of diagram. <laughs>